Hello again, everyone. This is Pino Trogu from San Francisco State University, and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today is January 24, 2021. And today we're going to do a little exercise. This is the second assignment for the uh, spring 2021 um, class. It's how to draw parallel lines, which is a Kind of a standard, I guess, in, a, in drawing classes, in design classes. But I'll show you. Um, it will help in the lettering um, whenever we have to do lettering, but also it will help in drawing anything that has parallel lines, like a, an oblique view of an object, for example. But I'll actually just show you real quick where I got sort of the inspiration to insert this assignment. And that is from this set of um, uh, books from the Basel School of Design. This is from the 80s, this book. Um, anyway, in book two, there's actually a chapter on lettering. And even though we're not going to do lettering uh, right here, um, the assignments were pretty neat because it's just a series of repeating strokes, sometimes straight, sometimes at an angle, um, to show how letter forms are constructed, at least the alphabet, you know, the Western alphabet um, from a series of strokes that sometimes are round, but often are straight and they go in a certain direction. Okay, so that would be um, connected to how we uh, write and how in a sense lettering and all style letters and the, the common letters that we use today really are derived from, from handwriting. Um, so when, when we write, there might be a particular angle. In this case, it's this angle, which comes natural, you know, from holding the pen, pencil or the reed. Um, and so it's related to lettering, but it's also a very good exercise now. What I'm doing now, I'm actually working, I'm working from my wrist because the strokes are short, but if I was to do longer strokes, I probably would work from my elbow. So right now I'm not, I'm not using my wrist, I'm using my elbow. Uh, and even more so you could work from your, from your shoulder, which um, I guess I can show it on that video. Yeah, so your arm is kind of straight and it's kind of stiff in a sense, and it sort of swings back and forth from as far as you can make it swing from. Um, so that we, when we have horizontal lines, for example, it's really much simpler. If we don't move the wrist at all, we keep it really straight, aligned with your forearm, and, um, and you just move like that. And then if you wanted to do a different angle, you could always turn the paper, right? So I'm not changing anything. So this will become, this will be very useful later when we draw, for example, cubes and later actually will mean in maybe about an hour, half an hour, because I'm gonna record that video right after this. Um, so for this assignment, we're just gonna do maybe some short lines, just very methodic, try to keep them. You see, there's a little bit of a problem there. Um, and I'm using this very soft pencil again, which is really nice, actually. It really moves really smoothly. Uh, this paper, which I mentioned in my earlier video, is also sketch paper from, from school, but um, you can get yourself a, a pad. Um, this is, again, a good brand. Um, and, And this paper is also a nine by 12 I'm using here, okay? But you can use it in a half by 11 if you want. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do though, because I wanna get myself into the habit of doing it so that you can tell me, oh, well, you don't do it, why should I do it? And that is the title block. So uh, again, for these first few assignments, you can just use a, um, you can just do it freehand. So what you can do is, Take a board or a box or something that has a, a straight, clean edge, but not a sharp one, so don't cut yourselves. And when you align that um, to your gadget, to your board, 
you can use. So let's see how long this is going to take. It's uh, 953. All right. Let me see if I have a pencil that's a little sharper. Yeah. So just gauge half an inch. And again, this is that trick, carpentry's trick. Um, because I don't want to move now too much around. I'm going to just move the paper on the same corner. So I'm using again the um, my middle finger to set the distance from the tip, right? It's kind of like a caliper um, to my finger and that's going to give me the edge. So you can play around a little bit, right? First and then when you're set, you can just do it. And maybe I'm doing a little less now than half inch. So I don't know, looks a little smaller. Earlier I doubted myself and then it turned out perfect. But now I have a feeling it's a little short. So, but I'm just going to keep it the same. Um, and again, this is just going to make your drawing look professional. Um, yeah, I, I have a feeling this is really a little, a little less than half an inch. But anyway, we'll check it later. So now you want to do three quarters of an inch on top of that for your title block. And so what you want to do is move your finger back, you know, your middle finger back a little bit. And it's harder because um, the distance is bigger, right? So, but I'm going to try again. Nevertheless, and then in the middle, we're going to do, remember, a couple of lighter lines. And now I'm going to do them really narrow, actually, because, um, well, it's, uh, it's kind of neat. So uh, why did I do that? Oh, yeah, because if the title is long, then the letters can be smaller, then you can fit more stuff, okay? If the, your pencil get um, dull, I'll show you in the next video how to sharpen it by hand. But if you happen to have a nice sharpener, and this one was recommended by Mike Lynn, an extraordinary drawer, landscape architect. And unfortunately it's out of, I should have said they don't make it anymore, but um, it's fantastic. And it does save some time. Um, you can always, you know, roll the, roll the lead. So, hmm, roll the lead and I was rolling my tongue. <laughs> Uh, to make it to make it sharper like that. Um, so yeah, so let me write. Okay, we said the first the first part is going to be is going to be um, the name, rather the number, the number of the drawing. So that would be number two. Um, and then just take your time. Okay, I'm going to take my time now. Draw parallel lines. Okay. I guess I can do this freehand for now. Um, then it would be my name. Well, your name. So student name. So now I'm going to write here student name. Okay. I don't want you to write. Pinot Trogo twice, like I did in the other student name. Um, then we're gonna write my name. Well, I guess, okay. I guess we could just write Trogo instead of Pinot Trogo, maybe. So I'll put a question mark there. Um, and then we can say this to 20. And if there is room, I don't know, maybe even S, F, S, U, why not? Um, and then the date, and then today is January. Yeah, you can see it's already different from here to here. I'm losing it a little bit, right? So step back, okay. I'd like to keep that bit, that little bit of a, of a slant there, a little italic, so why not? So January 24th, 2021. Okay, so that took four minutes, okay? So four minutes, so you don't get a D. Sorry, I'm sounding really, really strict here, but I'm not really, I'm a, 
I'm a nice guy in general. Um, but yeah, just do it. Do it before you start. That way, you know, you forget about it. Um, and um, and then, hey, if you mess up, okay, you have to do another drawing. So be it. You might have to do another drawing, okay? Um, maybe you can erase and still use it. All right, so don't worry too much about the... Um, Oh, I'm just curious, actually. Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I think I was wrong. I didn't do it quite right. Let's see. Oh, uh, no, it's actually. Yeah, actually, it's quite less. So half an inch would have been there. So I was quite short there, way, way off. <laughs> Bad. Um, and then three quarters were closer. So. Yeah, it, it just, it's funny, just by looking at the proportion to the overall sheet, I kind of knew that that was not quite right. Um, okay, now you can just have fun and you can, you know, put some music on. I, I hope you notice that I'm not playing any music in the video so that you can play your own music and, um, and not have, you know, conflicting tastes of music. I'm sure you probably wouldn't like all my music. <laughs> um, Anyway, so yeah, uh, maybe you can start, let's see, we go from small to large perhaps. So just maybe like a few strokes, pretending that you are doing lettering. And of course, you know, if they were really tiny, this could take a long time, but that's okay. So let's assume now I'm doing maybe lettering, okay? So I could do, see, yeah, I tend to, so the trick is not to, and then maybe, okay, so maybe, if I move, you say it's lit. If I move the paper, it's easier um, because I'm keeping the same, the same angle. Now you could try also to do some lines, you know, like this. In other words, going up and down, which is actually harder than going sideways because again, when you go up and down, your shoulder it's much harder for it to swing back and forth, front and back, rather than side to side. Um, so, but just for fun, you know, this could be the strokes of letters, for example, and then maybe you have italic. Um, yeah, and 2B is definitely a, the, a, the least soft pencil that you should use. And this is, yeah, this is 2, no, sorry, HB, I, would, I meant, but this is actually this is HP number two. It's just a really high quality. It's called Mirado Black Warrior. Um, and then you, if you want, you could test different hardnesses by taking different tools, right? Now, once again, I'm just gonna spend two more words to say that I really don't like these guys, which are the guys that, you know, you do click, 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 and they come out and they're so dinky and they break either this one this one and pencil is just fine for this exercise so okay now this will be used for later when we do parallel drawings uh, parallel projections meaning oblique views of an object meaning um, for example if i have a cube and i'm going to draw it even though you can see there is a little bit of perspective here i can i should also practice making sure that these are parallel and not converging, okay? So, um, yeah, so, you know, maybe we do some that are longer. And right now I'm doing different angles, okay? So we could say that's maybe 90 degrees. By the way, you don't have to draw everything that I draw, like sometimes I might have extra sketches or annotations. Um, like I put all those dimensions in the title block earlier for the, um, title block drawing, but you know, don't put those in, just keep it simple. You can put a drawing in if you want. Um, anyway, this is maybe 90, this might be, oh, I don't know, 70. Um, so then you can go bigger. And you know, maybe you wanna, break it up a little bit, but you can see it's not that easy to keep the same distance. Um, now, later we're gonna talk when we do some quick, quick sketches, we're gonna talk how to vary the lines so that, you know, by varying the pressure, you can make the lines more interesting. 
uh, well, actually, that seems kind of fun. So maybe if you want to practice some of this. But already doing two things at once, keeping the angle and doing this variation, you can see <laughs> it's more challenging. Um, so maybe stick to one thing at the time. Uh, and by the way, you know, I don't do this all the time either, right? So, which is why I lose the practice too of anything. Um, and um, so maybe then you want to do, let's see how good I am. I want to do maybe uh, 30 degrees, which might be this one, because that is going to be a very useful angle um, to do um, to do uh, cubes uh, a little bit off. Okay, close. Um, so yeah, that's the tool that we'll use to um, to draw, for example, a cube in perspective, or rather, a cube in isometric, which. Um, could be many different angles, um, right? Could be this angle, could be that angle. It could be very, you know, almost in the front. But generally, an easy way to start is to have all the angles being the same, okay? So this is a projection now on this piece of acetate of that cube. Um, and this angle that I just did here is basically the angle on my paper right there, okay? So I can try to match that again and let's see, yeah, there we go. Okay, so um, so it's, it's good practice to try to get that angle right. Um, and, I'll, and then in the next drawing, I'll show you why. Um, mainly it's because I don't want you to draw cubes where you can see this perfectly square and then you see also the side, but then this is square. So that's impossible. You cannot see both at the same time, both this being perfect square and this being at an angle. Um, so anyway, that's our 30 degree. I'm gonna just write it down, although it makes the drawing not as nice, right? <laughs> um, so let's see. And you can move the paper around for this exercise because it's a little easier, right? Um, okay, so let's do some more 30 degree angle lines. Am I going higher? Looks like I'm going higher. I was supposed to go a little lower. If the, if the pencil starts getting like a chisel uh, where the, um, where the tip starts, you know, getting worn like all in the same direction, you know, so this would, this would be what it looks like uh, from the side, just turn your pencil, okay? Just turn it around so you get more mileage out of that tip before you really have to sharpen it again. Okay, and then you might want to try the opposite. So maybe that's this, I don't know. Um, I recommend don't go like this, like a, a cow plowing, no, an ox plowing the field um, like this. You know, when you get to the end, you go back. Rather, just go back always to the beginning. A um, little, little trivia, old Greek used to be written like that. You start here, you end there, and then instead of going back, you would, come, you would go backwards. And I can remember not the term, but it's just exactly that, plowing the field. Um, not only that, the letters themselves were like flipped when you go the other direction, insane. But they read it perfectly. Okay, so you could, you could play around with, you know, maybe your composition, if you want to start to, it starts to be a little bit like a textile. Um, and now, you know, between this angle and this angle, which is, let's say they're both 30 and then the vertical, that's how we would eventually, we're going to construct our cubes, right? That's 30 one way, 30 the other way. Okay, so that's one, one angle. That's the other angle, and this is the third angle. 
All right. So I want to well just finish it, but you know what this is going, um, but why don't I finish so that, you know, maybe again for a break, you just do some more small ones again. Uh, this technique, by the way, and again, I don't want to do it in this drawing, but um, can be used very effectively if you want to do a quick, a quick shadow on an object. So let's say, you know, in, in art class, you know, classic art class, still life class, you would do, you know, you would do this thing called chiaroscuro, right? You would try to really smooth, be very smooth, um, you know, maybe, you know, so keep, you know, without really moving off the pencil, off the paper, right? So it's very soft and gets very, um, and I'm doing it still kind of graphically, which is the way we, we want, we, we should use it for our purposes, which is this. Um, and that would be like, okay, I just want to show a little bit of dimension here. I can just do this really. So just, just showing, you know, and maybe I want to fade it for some, you know, even though this might not be realistic, it gives a okay now if you wanted to fade the shadow or you know then you could do maybe one next to it like that um now this is of course totally wrong because the light is coming from here the shadow should be going that way but i had no room <laughs> oops so I had to do it the other way, but it still looks not too bad. Um, all right. So yeah, so just use pencil. Don't use anything else. And uh, just have fun with this. I know it's a little repetitive, but again, maybe if you have good music playing in the background, it's not so bad. Um, you could try this too, right? This may be a little a little simpler. Well, easier said than done. Um, there is something. Um, well, I don't want to get too spiritual here, but something relaxing and something. Um, I don't know, it's just very physical, you know, this idea of just drawing lines and, and in a way getting into them, you know, to, to sort of, in other words, the connection between your eye and the drawing and the hand is, is quite direct, especially when, you know, we're not writing, if we're just drawing, that's, that's, much earlier, right, than the natural language. So, okay, I'm gonna do one less set. You know, you could practice perhaps doing gradations and then, you know, back. Ah much harder than doing the same spacing. <laughs> yeah, just fill it up, okay? There is somewhere on the internet some guy who draws these amazing straight lines, just just, just like if, as if you were connected to a computer. Uh, it's a little scary. But um, they don't have to be perfect. If you wanna write, draw a perfect line, you can always use a ruler and just draw it with a ruler. Okay, all right. So once again, you're drawing um, your border, 
should be similar weight to the actual artwork, let's just call it, okay? Um, and uh, so that it really frames it nicely. And once again, I made this particular one a little small. It's not quite half an inch, um, but uh, that's it, okay? So that's the end of, of this video. And the next one will be about drawing cubes, okay?